Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. And this is a tutorial on Natural Macro settings. It's not to download. I have a simple download video guide that I've got linked in the description. It's the first link. If you're confused on how to run the macro or some settings about it, or if you have any problems, this video might help you out. So I'll suggest watching it all the way through. So let's just get straight into it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my macro. I've already got it opened. And we'll start with the gather and we'll go all the way through. So if you understand this page, just skip a few seconds and I might be on this one. So the gather tab, you have three different options. You can put three different fields in at once and it will gather each from those fields one after the other. But I would suggest having it only on one as it's much easier to control and much easier to understand at first. And then you can play around and get more. So here you can select your field and any field you want, you can just select. You have a pattern shape here. This is basically how the macro walks around in the field. So squares is automatically selected and you know, you can change it to typewriter or something like that and snake. It's pretty much self-explanatory lines. It just moves in lines, but some of these ones are a little bit more confusing, but you can, you can test them out and see how it works. The length here is just extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. The width is how far it actually moves in the field. <coughs> <coughs> This rotate camera means how many times it'll rotate when you first get in the field. I'll show you how this works. And as you can see, it's about to turn left two times, which it basically instantly done it, but it actually done a full 180 because I had it on left two times. So this one isn't too important unless you want to farm in a certain direction with shift lock on. Gather with shift lock basically just gathers with shift lock activated. Invert. I wouldn't worry about that too much unless you have inverted settings. Here you have your walk or reset. So after you've been gathering in the field and you've got a full backpack, you can either walk to convert it or reset. I would suggest resetting because sometimes walking doesn't work depending on your haste and things like that. 20 minutes here just means if you don't fill up your backpack in 20 minutes, it'll just reset. And this is your backpack percentage that will reset at, which... 95 i would suggest having that because sometimes it can glitch at 100 sprinkler start location wherever you put this just means it'll start in the field as you can see here in stump field before it placed it in the center because i had center and upper left would be upper left corner and stuff like that so that's everything in the gather tab now let's move on to the next one so now we're on collect slash kill when the macro starts if you have any of these selected, it'll basically just go and check wealth clock and check it every hour to get tickets. Mondo will do the same every hour and so on. Don't tick any of the Beesmus stuff because it's not Beesmus at the moment. But if it were to be Beesmus, obviously, you know, tick it. Now we have the kill status over here. A lot of people forget about this. A lot of people miss this. But if you click over here on kill, uh, you can select for a bug run. And you can also select kill vicious bee. Don't select kill vicious bee unless you're like a pro because a lot of times it'll just die and get stuck in a continuous loop trying to kill vicious bee. You also have bosses here, which the same thing applies. If you can't normally defeat it in maybe under a minute, probably don't go for it. And now we'll head over to boost. This just means if you select here HQ field boosters, obviously it's free. You can select blue, red or mountain. Make sure you have these unlocked, otherwise it won't work. If you want to select all these boosters, such as blue, red and mountain top, you can separate each boost by 15 minutes or 10 or however much you want to. And you can select this button here, which will gather in the boosted field. You also have hotbar slots here. If I were to put a glue in my slot 2, and then go back into number 2, and I can change it to, I can change it to always, and set it to like every 15 minutes or change it if I wanted to. You also have enzymes and all that. And it will do it whenever you confetti balloon. The rest of this is just pretty straightforward. You also have an auto field booster. Be careful using hotbar slots and the auto field booster by the way. Because it will drain your materials. Only use this if you're end game and you're, you're pro. So this is a little bit confusing at first. But it also works with hotbar slots. You can use dice. And obviously set your hotbar slots. You can use glitter. Set your hotbar. And I would also tick the free field boosters. You can limit these each time. If you don't want to use too many dice. So I could just say change it to 10. Let's say I wanted it to boost on pine tree. It would only roll 10 times. If I didn't get pine tree. It wouldn't boost. It would boost with glitter instead. If it could. And that's it for the auto boost settings. It also says 
a better description through here if you want to read it. All right, now we'll head over to Quest. This is pretty simple. If you want to do Polar Bear's Quest, just click Enable. If you want to do Black Bear's, click Enable. But Black Bear's Quest only works if you are onto the repeatable quests. You have to complete the main quest line where you get the Mythic Egg, otherwise it won't work. Bucket Bear you can enable, but Ant Pass Collection will automatically turn on for you. Otherwise, once you get to one of the Ant Challenge quests, it won't work. And you also have Riley B. You have some quest settings here. I would suggest changing it to Reset because walking just takes too long. Now let's move over to planters. So it'll automatically be off. You want to turn it to on and you have quite a lot of information here. Now, if you're a blue, white or red hive, all I would suggest doing is change it to your hive color and it'll basically just set it for you. And then you can change your allowed planters. I would suggest just ticking the ones that you have and unticking the ones you don't have. Don't do paper or ticket planters because that would just be a waste and you have to buy ticket planners and paper planners so don't do that just do the ones that are reusable infinitely then you can have harvest every two hours you can change this to auto and it'll automatically do it for the best time depending on the planner or you can wait till it's fully grown you also have only gather and plant a field that means it'll only gather in the field i wouldn't suggest turning this on it's not too useful you also have a gather field nectar sipping which is basically the same thing and now you have allowed fields you can untick or tick whatever field you don't want to be in. Make sure your max planters is always on three. Otherwise, if you have it on two, it'll only plant two out of all the planters you've selected. Three is the maximum in fields at all times, so make sure it's always on three. You also have show timers up here. Um, it'll basically just show you timers of how long the planters left until it's going to be collected. And that's basically it for the planters. Now we have status. Status hasn't got much, it's just got your status log, your total and session runtime, Discord integration. So if you connect this to your Discord account, it'll send you screenshots of all these things you tick and some user ID pings, emergency balloon, like anything. It also sends image feedback every hour, which is pretty cool. I'll tell you how to connect this soon because this isn't the page you actually connect it. So if we go in settings, you have the GOI theme. MacLine 3, I would suggest just keeping it on because that's what I explained it on, but you can change it and it will go to minimal. Let's just see what this looks like. And it changes the look. Okay, then you have GUI transparency. That basically just changes how you can see it. Always on top. That doesn't really matter. Okay, your hive slot. This is very important. A lot of this settings tab is very important, so make sure you get it correct. You have to select the hive slot you've claimed. So the one I'm in is one... This one's two, three, four, five, and six. So it's pretty much the closest to the cannons one, and then the next one over is two, three, four. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to change it to one because that's what I need. This isn't too important, but just put in how many bees you have in your hive, and you can put in a setting wait a few seconds after convert, but that's not really useful. You can reset field defaults and reset all settings here. Wouldn't suggest doing this, otherwise you'll lose everything we've just talked about. You also have reconnect settings. If you're in a private server, you have to paste your private server here. You won't be able to rejoin if your account's under 13 because it uses an external BSS link to join into B-Swarm Simulator. It's weird, but it works. Elol made it. He quit also. Rip Elol. Yeah, just some noobs still hasn't passed him. Anyways, that's not the point. Then you can have some automatically reconnect every few hours if you want the server to reset or something. And this Natro so broke thing is when it rejoins, it'll just say Natro broke at the time it did. It's pretty weird. I don't have it on. Weird emoji there too. And I'll suggest ticking this just in case you can't join back your private server, just in case it's not working. It'll fall back to a public server, which means it'll just take you in a public server. You also have character settings. This is another important thing. You have to go into your settings over here and go down to move speed. Make sure you have no haste ability on or something that will make you move faster. Otherwise, this will affect your macro. So right now, I have three times haste on, so I'm just going to wait until this goes away. I also have Black Bear Morph that I have to wait for too. All right, now that I have no haste abilities, my move speed is 28. Make sure to check this. It might not be 28 for you, so move speed correction. You can tick this. You can tick it if you want. It'll detect if you have oil or haste on or any abilities that make you go faster and try its best to stay in the field. Movement method, another important thing. 
If you have the red cannon unlocked, use the red cannon, otherwise walk. And you need to change your sprinkler type and put it in the first slot, otherwise it won't place your sprinkler. You have convert your balloon. If you have it set to always, every time you reset, it'll always convert. You can change it to every 30 minutes or something like that. Multiple reset just means it'll reset multiple times, which it's weird, just have it on zero. Gather double reset, I'm not exactly sure what this means, but I'm pretty sure it's important, so just tick it. Disable tool use, keep that unchecked, otherwise your tool won't swing. All right, now we have MISC. So this has recently come in, maybe a few months ago, which is recent for me because I haven't macroed for a long time. You have gifted basic bee auto hatcher. This this can be good if you want to hatch a gifted basic bee and it will just auto hatch basic eggs for you. Bitter berry auto feeder, auto mutator that's coming soon. You have other tools here, ex export hive bee list for hive builder. That's the thing in Natro Macro. It's a little bit weird. You can basically build a hive like in an image on Discord. It's a little bit weird. It's hard to work, but yeah. Then you have a ticket shop calculator on Google Sheets. It's another thing you you guys can look into if you want to. You can change your hotkeys, debug log options, and error check. You can also have night detection amount announcement in Discord, and report bugs and make suggestions. And then you have the contributors here. Um, all of these people that helped make this macro. It's quite a lot of people. Okay, so I missed where to detect where to connect your discord account um let me go back somehow i missed it all right so this is how you connect it you have to make your own server it's pretty simple you just go add server and make your own i'm gonna do that myself too just do for me and my friends and create and then you can make a new channel or i'm just gonna do it in general let me stretch this out a little bit more and you got to go to integrations and create webhook and now I have a webhook created. You can change the name and you have to copy webhook URL, URL and go back into Natural Macro and paste it where it says here. Which I've already done it, so I don't need to do it. Oh, wait, no. There we go. Okay, I've got it. And now every hour or every time it'll give you macro updates, like pretty often. It's a pretty good tool if you want to check on your macro when you're not near your pc so do it if you like it's up to you so that's pretty much it for this video thank you for watching i also didn't mention this says your current field down here when you are macroing the status is here and you have start f1 pause f2 stop f3 and that's it so i'm pretty sure this video was a decent in-depth guide if it wasn't that great you can tell me i always want to know when i don't make a good quality video so Tell me if I've done a horrible job. I won't get offended. But if you do want me to help you personally, I might be able to do it or I'll just send you to Natural Macro help guide people. But thank you guys for watching. Once again, if you do want help, join my Discord server and ask me through there because YouTube comments, they're hard to work with. It takes a long time to reply and for things to load and you can't send images. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.